In this video, we'll do three slightly harder symbolizations. They all sort of have some sort of minor trick to them that we just want to make sure we go over. So this one is neither cyclists nor pedestrians are bad for the environment. Now the problem with this is that a lot of people will just try and symbolize this immediately and they'll, what I mean by that is they'll read it left to right and they'll immediately try and force some form of neither or in and neither nor into their symbolization. But it turns out that it's very difficult to symbolize that way. When you have negations, one of the best skills that you can have is to actually paraphrase. So when I say, see, neither cyclists nor pedestrians are bad for the environment, I really just ask what that means. Uh, because there's a lot of negations here, and I think I can just simplify this. So what does this mean? What does the statement, neither cyclists nor pedestrians are bad for the envi environment? Well, it really means if you're a cyclist or a pedestrian, uh, pedestrian, then you are good for the environment. That's what it means. And so I don't have to worry about symbolizing this. If I paraphrase and have a good paraphrase, uh, it's a far easier to symbolize because notice I've already put this paraphrase into some sort of canonical form and, um, and it's a lot easier to symbolize. Okay. Now, I did change some things here. I just want to sort of make it really clear. Uh, some people here might have written and, uh, and I'm going to talk about that later on in this video, but I'm just going to highlight what I mean here. So, am I talking about all cyclists and pedestrians or some? It's pretty clear I'm talking about all. So I'm just going to start. And I want to say, if you're a cyclist or a pedestrian. Now, some people who wrote and, be careful. It really means or if you're doing this combined group statement here. So now, then I can say, if you're a cyclist or you're a pedestrian, then what's the property? Well, it's that you're not bad for the environment. I wrote here good. That's actually not quite accurate. I should just say not bad. Because if you're not bad, it doesn't necessarily mean you're good. You could, I suppose, be neutral. And so we would write not BX. This is by far the easiest way. If you try and force some sort of neither nor into this, it's actually going to be pretty difficult. Uh, it's a lot easier to do it like so. Now, some people might have just split this into a statement about cyclists. And then we can say, and there's some other statement about uh, pedestrians. And that's perfectly acceptable. So you could have done this split statement. Uh, but I always find it easier if it's the case here that they both have the same property. You can just say, well, instead of it being this statement and this statement, I'll just use the or in the group to combine the groups and I have a shorter statement to symbolize. It doesn't really matter either way. So this is a tricky one unless you paraphrase it. Once you paraphrase it, it's very straightforward to symbolize. Dark chocolate, which is very satisfying, and red wine neither prevent cancer nor prolong life. The thing to recognize here immediately from uh, what we learned in Sententia Logic is that we have this comma which, and this closes right there at the comma. And these comma which statements uh, should be ripped out and symbolized separately from the rest of the sentence. I typically like to do it first, but if you prefer to do it last, that's fine. So I'll do it first. This just says which is very satisfying. And so what I just need to ask is what is the subject that is being implied in this non-restrictive clause? Well, clearly it's dark chocolate. Dark chocolate, which is very satisfying, and da 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 da. So I'm just going to symbolize this yellow non-restrictive clause. And so I just want to say dark chocolate is very satisfying. Now, when I say that, the group is dark chocolate and the property is very satisfying. And the question is, am I asking about? Am I saying this about all dark chocolate or some dark chocolate? And when you say it out loud, it's typically pretty obvious that I'm talking about all. So I'll say for anything, if you're dark and you are chocolate, then you are very satisfying. And a non-restrictive clause is separated from the rest of the sentence via a conjunction. So you just throw in the conjunction. That's actually the main connective of this entire sentence. And we've done that, no problem. Now I can symbolize the leftover, which I'll do. And so here, the leftover, I'm going to find out the leftover by reading everything except for the yellow highlight. So this should say, dark chocolate and red wine neither prevent cancer nor prolong life. So here, the group is dark chocolate and red wine. And the property is, it neither prevents cancer 
nor prolongs life. So that's okay, that's a nice neither nor, and it's unlike the neither nor above because it's not modifying our subject, it's just a straight uh, property, so it's pretty straightforward. Am I talking about all dark chocolate and red wine, or some? Again, I hope it's clear that I'm talking about all, so I'll just open up a universal, and I'll begin. I used X here. If you change to Y or Z, perfectly fine. So I'll say dark chocolate and uh, red wine. That's a B and an A. And then has the property neither prevents cancer nor prolongs life. So it's neither prevents cancer nor prolongs life. Okay. Now, this makes sense, but I hope some of you notice that it is incorrect. There's an important mistake here. And the mistake is I wrote this and as this and. But it's not saying that you are dark and chocolate and red and wine. It's saying if you're this thing or this thing. And so this is what I talked about in the above uh, um, example, but I just wanted to make it clear. And I hope you caught that. I'm really saying that you can be dark chocolate or you can be red wine, and then you have this property. Uh, so I have to be careful and group these off and change this to a disjunction. Now, if I didn't have the brackets here, it would be an ambiguous sentence, which means it's not well formed. So you have to make sure this is one group, this is another, and I'm saying if you're this thing or you're this thing, then you happen to have this property. Now, could you be both? Sure, it, there's nothing in principle but the logic saying you can't be both, and notice it doesn't actually say anything about both or not here. So the or is inclusive, it allows for the possibility, that's exactly what we want. In my videos I refer to this a lot of the time as the cat dog, because I have this cat dog example, so never be fooled by the cat dog. If I say cats and dogs, I mean you're a cat or a dog. And if I say dark chocolate and red wine, it means you're dark chocolate or you're red wine, and then you just stash the property here. Last example, happy kids that aren't mean are popular unless no one is in their right mind. Now, above we did a non-restrictive clause, and uh, here we actually are doing a restrictive clause. So that without a comma. And so that without a comma is just adding more sort of specificity to our group. So what that's telling me is that it's part of the group, and so the group is happy kids that aren't mean, because this in is helping make my group more precise. And then the final property is that they are popular unless no one is in their right mind. And of course I need to be careful because I should see that, ooh, that's a bad color combination, I will remove that, um, that we have the unless there. So we need to be careful about that. So I can just start by focusing on the uh, universal here because I'm saying, am I saying all happy kids that aren't mean have this property or some happy kids? Well, again, I'm saying all. So I'll say for everything that is happy, that's H, and a kid, that's B, and not mean, then you have the property that you are popular unless no one is in their right mind. So I'm going to say the property is you're popular unless, that's just or, you can do it a uh, variance if you want, no one is in their right mind. Now what makes this tricky, other than just this restrictive clause, is that I have this phrase here, no one is in their right mind. And what a lot of people do typically when they see this is they would say um, there is a person who is not in their right mind. Now this looks okay, it looks like you're capturing all the information, but the problem here is that this person, who's not in their right mind, is also the happy kid that isn't mean. And so that's not really what it's stating here. It's clear from the sentence that this isn't the same as the happy kids that aren't mean. In fact, it's sort of unrelated. And the trick here is you have to realize that this no one is a different group. And when you have a different group, you can't use the same quantifier. In fact, you actually want to use a brand new quantifier. 
So I'll say, when I say no one is in their right mind, I have to be careful about this no one. This is a negated quantifier, which we went over in the previous video. So no one is in their right mind. I'll say that means it's not the case that there exists something, and I'll change the letter because I'm still under the scope of this universal X, that is a person and in their right mind. And so we use the quantifier to indicate that I'm talking about something different and not the same thing as the happy kid. Now there are lots of variants on this. Uh, you could have done the hx arrow bx arrow negation dx variant like uh, I demonstrated before. But the more interesting variant is where you rip the unless out because it's pretty clear here that this unless clause doesn't have anything to do with this happy kid. So some of you will have symbolized like this. You'll have the same start, and you'll have the negation dx, and you'll read it as this, and then you'll close the scope here, and then you'll do the unless, and you'll have this. This is actually perfectly acceptable. Um, it doesn't really work so nicely when we get to multiplace predicate logic, uh, when we have sort of multiplace relations. But for now, this makes sense and it's good. So any sort of variant on this is fine. And of course, whenever we have unless, we could have done the if not one, then the other. So I could have actually put this at the front without the negation, conditional and this, or some combination like that. Some people really like to think about unless being if not one, then the other. That's perfectly fine, so you could symbolize it using that variant as well.